Filmmaker Jordan Albertson grew up on Woodby Island, where in 1995, at the tender age of 13, he discovered and became obsessed with the Sonics. No, not the basketball team, but the 1960s garage rock band out of Tacoma that laid the groundwork for both punk rock and grunge. Well, Jordan has transformed his love of the band into an award-winning documentary called Boom, a film about the Sonics. We caught up with Jordan at his Bozeman, Montana home, where he lives with his lovely wife, Sasha, and his cute little dog, Monster. Hey, Jordan. Yeah. Hey, it's Nancy. You ready to go? Hey, Nancy. Yeah. Hold on. All right. All right. Let's do this thing. So let me ask you this. Um, how did you discover the Sonics? Well, I discovered the Sonics when I was a kid. My, uh, my dad actually told me about them because he used to go see them when he was a teenager and he walked by my room um one morning and heard me listening to nirvana and he was like if you like this you should check out this band the sonics and i kind of ignored him because everything I my dad listened to i thought was really lame at the time a couple days later i came home from school my dad had found an old copy of boom left it resting against my door so i went into my room and put it on Within seconds, they instantly became my favorite band. So when you put the record on that first time, what is it that you heard that was so compelling? Well, it was just dangerous. The first like guitar tone you hear, it just sounded so unclean and, and you know, just kind of dirty. And, you know, I think I was 13 at the time. And so I was definitely going through my rebellious phase. <laughs> so naturally I thought I knew everything there was to know about everything. But this sounded like punk rock. And historically speaking, these guys were almost 15 years before the Ramones. I just this fell in love with that band and every song on there was so different from anything else, you know, recorded at that time. I just sat there staring at this album cover, looking at these five badass dudes. Who were they? And what happened to them? So fast forward to 2008, you're 26, and you begin production on a documentary about the Sonics. Why then? The Sonics had reunited, and they announced their first hometown show, which was Halloween night 2008 at the Paramount Theater. My mind was kind of blown. It was one of those things like a rock reunion that no one ever thought would happen. It was almost like looking on stage and seeing like a unicorn or something. It was just so uh, insane to me. I immediately called my dad and told him about the show. We grabbed tickets and I flew up from LA for the gig. And that night, I think I'd had a few drinks, I decided, I was like, I'm going to make a movie about the Sonics. And wrote this insanely long email where I pitched this movie about the Sonics that I wanted to make. And Buck Ormsby wrote me back the next morning. And uh, Buck and I ended up having lunch in Tacoma and we kind of shook hands and, and said, all right, let's do it. So the Sonics stopped playing in the late 60s, so there isn't a whole lot of performance footage. How did you deal with that, making the film? It wasn't the biggest hurdle, you know? It was more about just, you know, getting access to the those amazing Ginny Delaccio photos. You know, one of the things about the film is it, it, it only deals with that part of the history for about the first 40 minutes of the movie. Uh, and then after that, it, the film kind of traces... Uh, what happened to the band after they broke up and how that music became influential without them knowing about it. If it had not been for Buck, we would, you know, nobody would remember us. He had talked to lots of, lots of promoters who would be interested in having the Sonics go to Europe and tour. This little regional band from the 60s, this little cult band from Tacoma, Washington, after 40 years, were finally out touring the world. Whoop, they pulled the curtains and we all went, oh God. And here are the people, we looked out there, I'm not kidding you, it looked like it did when we quit 40 years ago. Pretty soon they were out diving off the stage and doing a, a mosh pit and everything. We said, like, we're in! <laughs> they like us no matter how old we are. I mean, I started playing guitar when I was 11, so... So the movie took 10 years to finish, lots of ups and downs along the way. Describe, if you can, that 
turning point moment with Pearl Jam guitarist Mike McCready? You know, I was living in L.A. with my now wife, Sasha, and I had a number of projects that I was trying to get financing for. Everything fell apart, and we, we moved. We moved to Bozeman, Montana, and in a lot of ways it was, you know, the end of the movie, and maybe even the end of my career. I'd kind of given up on everything, and I got a job at a sushi restaurant, and... Uh, you know, one day Mike McCready came walking in with his family and I told him what I was trying to do. And he was like, it sounds great. And he gave me his phone number and, and, you know, his involvement really set a fire, you know, not just under me, but under the film and, and had that meeting not happened. I don't think the film would have ever been finished. So all five of the original members of the Sonics, they've seen the film. How did they react? They loved it. I think they were all you know, pretty surprised and, and pretty emotional about it. I think they realized that I wasn't trying to make them look bad or anything. Or, and it was really just kind of a love letter that I was, you know, basically writing to them. Well, knowing what you know now, being going through this, would you do it all again? You know, it's so hard. It's, it's so hard to answer that question. I've been asked that a few times. I don't know. I, the, you know, the last 10 years of my life have been so difficult and so painful and I'm kind of surprised I actually even made it out <laughs> to be honest but had I not gone through this process I probably wouldn't be married with my wife Sasha and I wouldn't have my dog and and, and now that I have this film that's finished and you know gone on to win awards and so I, I wouldn't want to go through it again <laughs> but looking back and knowing what good came out of all of that uh, I don't know, I guess that's the only way I can answer that question.